All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to our second uh, monthly review of uh, the job report, the employment report, looking at the overall employment landscape. Uh, this should be a really exciting uh, half hour or so. Um, we've got a great panel of, of folks uh, to join us uh, here uh, today. Um, and uh, let's uh, actually bring on the panel. We could start talking about them and they could actually introduce themselves. We're waiting for Julia, so uh, we'll let Julia go last. So Jesse, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey everyone, uh, Jesse Tinsley, founder and CEO of Job Mobs out of the Bay Area. We focus on RPO and uh, recruiting and uh, known to post from time to time on so social media with some hot takes, so that's, uh, that's my background. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's go, Miles. Miles added you now. You're added to the panel now. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Miles Jennings. Uh, I'm founder and CEO of Recruiter.com. Uh, we provide on-demand recruiters for uh, contract hiring uh, positions, and we also post on uh, social once or, once or twice. Probably less hot takes than uh, than just uh, regular takes, but um, we also provide the recruiter index. We survey our uh, recruiters and talent acquisition professionals for insights into the job market. And we're gonna be discussing that today. So glad to be here, thank you. Thank you, Miles, and welcome Julia. Hey, Julia, how are you? Good, thanks, how are you? Good, can you just give a quick introduction? Sure, I am Julia Pollock, Chief Economist at ZipRecruiter. That's an online marketplace for employers and job seekers that uses smart matching technology to connect them. And um, I, at ZipRecruiter, spend my days looking at labor market data from billions of interactions between employers and job seekers. And also, I run uh, monthly surveys of job seekers, newly hired workers, and employers. Awesome. You know, the good news is you actually have like four people or five people on this call or four plus you who are just really get excited about workforce data. So like, you know, you got to get excited about workforce data to be in the space that we're in. Uh, but thank you very much. And finally, we're going to add Matthew Chan. Matthew, you want to just give a, a quick introduction? Yeah, for sure. So hi, I'm Matthew. I'm calling in from uh, London, UK. Um, so I'm working for Aura as a product economist, um, but also I'm a senior consultant at uh, Bain & Company Management Consulting Firm. Fantastic. Uh, we got a, a nice agenda. And the format that we're going to do is we're uh, going to see a quick presentation uh, by Miles on the Recruiter Index. Uh, Matthew will do a quick thing on the Aura report, uh, mostly focused on jobs and a little bit of job data. I'll do a quick uh, analysis of the Jolt numbers, some of the numbers that came on the Jolt, and then we'll go to a panel, overall panel conversation. If you have any questions uh, during uh, the overall session, uh, please send them in the chat at chat box, and I'll try to get to them uh, throughout the actual presentation itself. So without further ado, uh, Miles, take it away on the Recruiter Index. Hey, thanks, Evan. Uh, yes, so we pull our recruiters and talent acquisition professionals every month, and we've been doing this uh, since the uh, since the pandemic, actually, which was really interesting. Uh, what we're trying to do is really get a sense of the the forward looking uh, nature of the the job market uh, by pulling these recruiters and kind of asking them how they feel and kind of what they're seeing on the street. Uh, so uh, right now, basically, recruiters are being very cautious. You can see the uh, the overall sentiment, sort of how they're feeling about the job market, is pretty low. Uh, 2.7 is the lowest point uh, of the year. Now there are a number of uh, possible causes uh, for this. We saw from the uh, jobs report, and I'm sure we'll talk about that more. Uh, we saw that there was a a lowering. I think I think it lost about 600,000 uh, jobs in terms of just open jobs. So our recruiters are seeing a little less demand. It kind of jives with with what they're seeing. They're working on nine jobs now versus ten, so a little bit of a lower demand. And then also uh, about forty three percent, most of, uh, the plurality of them actually saw increases in applicant volume. So it's a little bit of the supply and demand side. It's tilting a little bit more toward the supply side, and recruiters uh, recruiters don't like that. But we'll see some more optimistic. Uh, uh, sentiment from the candidates. So uh, next slide. So this is pretty interesting. So we don't usually, sometimes they move in tandem, the sentiment of the candidates and the recruiters. And in this case, the candidates are really seeing increases month over month. So they had a, a 3.5 uh, out of out of five in terms of their sentiment, sort of how they're feeling. And this is in contrast to how recruiters are feeling. 
Um, so when you look at the jobs report that we have done some analysis on, uh, basically the, the total number of hires, so the open jobs fell, but the total number of hires, which is really what matters, actually kind of stayed the same. Uh, so candidates are actually feeling uh, pretty good uh, about things. They also, I was uh, thinking about this, they also really uh, want jobs that they like too, right? So our recruiters found that hybrid jobs and remote jobs are uh, have been really uh, picking up. Uh, candidates certainly like that. So they're optimistic about the types of jobs that are out there and their their prospects uh, for new roles. And they're still, you know, applying uh, uh, applying for new jobs and the quits remain the same, which indicates an optimism. Uh, next slide. Uh, and we look at particular industries here. So uh, healthcare has remained uh, very stable throughout the year. So that's still uh, the most in demand uh, industry. Of note here, and I think this is a very uh, positive indication, the tech sector uh, increased the most by 8%. So we had seen a little bit of that uh, falling over the past few months. And so this had a pretty strong uh, tick up. And that also uh, kind of jives with the, the overall market sentiment that is expecting uh, a bit of a tech rebound. And I think Jesse uh, has also indicated this uh, last month that he's kind of seeing that on the ground. Um, so I think that's uh, very positive. We saw a slight uh, decrease in uh, in retail, which uh, seems a, a little bit in contrast to the holiday season. But what's uh, kind of interesting, I did a little thinking on this, and uh, really the, the retail hiring that happens in uh, December uh, has, has been lower, although the holiday season has been uh, basically predicted to be very strong this year. So a lot of that is shifting to e-commerce, which basically means more tech hiring. So I think what we're seeing here overall is just a changing economy. Things are shifting. Uh, more and more hiring is inside the tech sector. And I think that's going to be the, the strongest as we go into uh, the new year. Very interesting. Not bad. Thanks, Miles. All right, let's keep going on data. So Matthew. Yeah, thanks. Take thanks, Miles. Thanks, Evan. Um, so yes, yeah, taking a couple of minutes to share the latest trends from the uh, from Aura's industry hiring trends report which is a report that we create on a monthly basis uh, from publicly available job posting data. So we've got some insights here from the latest November iteration. Um, as you can see here on the left-hand side, uh, new job postings had a downward trend in both North America and uh, EMEA uh, with a 10% drop uh, in the US as well, according to uh, compared with uh, figures uh, in October previously. Uh, and this is a slide that's uh, continued from the previous month where we saw 6% drop uh, in postings, uh, new postings in North America last month. And that was mentioned in last month's uh, webinar and part of what is a longer term trend over the year. Um, and this data very much aligns with the US job report findings, which uh, I'm sure Evan will speak about in a bit more detail later. Um, on the right hand side, we've ranked the top 10 industries by new job postings. Um, of these industries, marketing and financial services had the largest gains. Um, but on the other hand, uh, the internet sector had a significant drop of about 12%. And what's not on this list is uh, computer software job postings went down about 20% just outside this list here. So definitely a continuation of, of some of the well-documented struggles um, in the tech industry um, that have happened since, since late last year. Um, Evan, to the next slide, please. Thanks. Um, so our monthly order report also uh, deep dives into specific job types, such as AI-related jobs. So here we see um, that uh, the importance of AI as a skill um, is rising, very much rising in demand uh, and has been over the last uh, few months, um, both in absolute terms and as a percentage of overall software jobs. Um, and in particular, where we're seeing the biggest growth here is the financial services uh, sector, uh, where we've seen a 70, almost a 70% increase in AI related new job postings uh, month on month. Um, so really, really exciting uh, opportunities there um, for sure. Thanks, Evan. Uh, you bet. Um, my turn. Uh, Jolt Report. So I, I live and breathe the Jolt Report. Uh, I think that's probably one of the more interesting reports that come out. Uh, a little bit more, uh, a little backlogged, right? So the October report just came out uh, earlier this month. Um, and as I think Miles mentioned, you're really looking at a pretty consistent, uh, this, this graph. So these are the total job openings. And they've been down slightly. But the hires have actually been pretty consistent throughout the year. So in January, we hired 6.3 million people, and there were 5.8 million people hired 
uh, in uh, you know 5.8, 5.9, close to 5.9 in October. And the quit rate has also been pretty pretty uh, even really throughout the year. The graph on the right really shows that you know when people talk about going back to normal or normal sort of pre-19 average normal. Uh, we're still above normal. We're, we're above normal in hires. We're above normal in quits. Um, by the way, I think we're going to hit the second uh, the second year in a row of over fifty billion dollars more spent in hiring than we did pre-pandemic. Um, we'll run those numbers some other time. Uh, but again, looking at the Joel report, the open jobs have been coming down just slightly. The total hires has been pretty consistent. The total quits have been pretty consistent. So nowhere near the the bigger numbers that we saw. Sort of certainly in the you know the uh, the Great Resignation, et cetera, which I always refer to as the Greater Resignation, um, but certainly uh, not going back to the days we were before. Um, so this now takes us. Uh, hopefully, we we got some really interesting data uh, that came in there. So Julia, Julia, you you are the the product economist uh, um, par excellence in this space. So what do you think of all this data? How, how do you look at the data? This is even before the Q&A, by the way. This is just absolutely, <laughs> what, what do you think of all this data? So job openings are still quite elevated. They're about 25% more than before the pandemic, but pretty much every other measure in the JOLTS report, and those measures are actually more reliable. They're more measurable. They're more a physical recorded quantity, a quit or a hire. Uh, those have returned all the way back to their pre-pandemic normal. And um, you know, an alternative measure of job openings, which is online job postings, uh, according to our data, our count of unique job postings, that is also all the way back to the pre-pandemic level. So I would say this labor market is no longer coming back into balance. I think it is quite fully back in balance. Hey, so again, you know, we talked about this in our in our pre-call. You know, are you seeing the same number of companies posting fewer jobs or fewer companies posting fewer jobs or fewer po companies posting more jobs? How, how do you look at that? I'm really glad that you asked that question. And we uh, we ran the numbers yesterday and looked at it quite closely. Uh, the decline has almost entirely been along the extensive margin. So the, the decline in the number of organizations posting jobs, not in the number of jobs per organization. The average number of jobs posted per organization has actually stayed the same. And I think what's going on there is that there are some industries, there are some parts of the economy that are very sensitive to high interest rates and that are basically taking a wait and see approach and doing almost no new hiring that are allowing attrition to reduce the size of their workforce and that are not really hiring to replace people or to uh, expand headcount at the moment. Uh, and then there are other parts of the economy where life has continued as normal and they are you know, hiring like mad. Uh, really, thank, thank you so much. You know, um, Miles knows when we started doing the recruiter index, one of the data points, I used to just go online, go to ZipRecruiter and go, all right, how, how many posts do you have open and how many are for remote? And I just started using those numbers as sort of a benchmark of a litmus test of where the, where things are really going. So I, I guess the question then, Julia, is, you know, everyone got a little nervous, you know, uh, last week at the uh, the jobs report last Friday. Oh my God, there's a, you know, a, a, this sudden drop of, of jobs in the Jolt report, you know, hitting what is it, 8.6 million, something like that. Um, why did that happen? I, I think you started talking about the interest rates. Right. So I don't see this as a sudden drop. There's been a very gradual, orderly, steady decline in job openings uh, since their March 2022 peak. Uh, the decline in online job postings began in June, July of 2022 when the Fed started its supersized rate hikes. Um, and they have slowed the labor market down by design. Right? The bank lending to businesses and to households has slowed quite dramatically. Um, and you're seeing that effect uh, in, in the labor market. Businesses are, are, um, are so let's take an example. You talk to, say, uh, a, a company that invests in building apartment buildings. They'll say, yeah, since the Fed started raising rates, we're not buying it. We're not building any buildings right now. It doesn't make sense to build buildings. The borrowing costs are too high and the uh, valuations are too low. Um, we're just doing things like, you know, we're just treading water and snapping up depressed properties, right? So p businesses have pivoted and they're in a kind of protective crouch and they're not investing and growing right now because it doesn't pencil out. Um, and that has just been a kind of steady, orderly 
process largely, you know, by design. Uh, and once inflation is under control and everyone sort of agrees that we have landed, um, I think, you know, at some point the Fed will be able to start cutting rates. Um, and I think there'll be a, a lot of pent up demand for talent in tech, uh, in, in manufacturing. You know, we've, we've spent more we're spending on factories on building factories has increased more than 60 percent since the pandemic right we're building tons of factories but manufacturing employment has not risen and so we have all these factories that are waiting to staff up it'll happen once interest rates come down 150 basis points or so so i got two questions one is i think jesse's got a comment on this Je jesse's been like foaming re ready for the interest rates to come down for six nine months please, yeah, please, please bring the tsunami bring the tsunami of hiring go ahead jesse Jesse, you want to comment on this or are you just going to yeah. confirm? Yeah, yeah, quick comment. I think uh, we, we've been seeing this since call it early September. Um, it's been a pretty consistent uptrend across most tech companies, um, uh, specifically technology and like certain sectors. Uh, obviously, AI, software as a service, and, and crypto are all hiring pretty aggressively. And I think that that trend line actually is continuing quite heavily into next year. In fact, most of the hiring that we're we're basically gearing up for on our end to across our customers is in those sectors and, and it's going to play out in Q1 and Q2 pretty heavily. So um, and that's quite the reversal from the last 18 months from what we've seen. Sure. Like April sure. or May of 2022. So. Well, the so, stock market's always ahead of uh, of the Fed, yeah. right? So, um, yes. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's you know, in the price price to it already, right? Same with the crypto markets, too, like, like Bitcoin and right. the last rally the last few months. So, hey, so, 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 Julia, you probably don't have this information, but let's for next month, I think it'd be really interesting to see new companies posting new jobs on ZipRecruiter as a benchmark for the overall job sector. Because we all know if you're old enough, you know, that what usually saves the economy is small businesses. So you're you're. Broke up. I thought, thought it was me for a second. So, yeah, I thought it was me too. But that would be interesting statistic. Uh, yeah, interesting statistic to see new job starts, especially I think like Q1, Q2. Do you yeah. See, do you have any preliminary? Oh, sorry, you cut out, Evan. Sorry. Yeah, I lost yeah. everybody there for a second. But I, I think if we could actually look at new companies next, you know, next month, how many new companies are actually posting up new jobs? Because that becomes the life the lifeblood of, of the U.S. economy or small businesses. Absolutely. So love and, to actually do that. And I think the best news since the pandemic has been that the increase in business formation and new business applications, new business starts has remained elevated. It looks like something happened during the pandemic, hint, hint possibly the uh, big shift to remote work and sort of new norms uh, yes. in the workplace that have made it cheaper to start a business and uh, are causing more entrepreneurship and more new businesses. Uh, that's great. And, and by the way, I'll tell you something. I really had this theory that that it was just the companies. I, I told this to Miles the other day. It's the same companies, but instead of having an unlimited budget to post open jobs, all right. So instead of posting 10 jobs that are the same, then five are the same, I'm just going to post uh, six of them. You know, And I, I was wrong because it's the same companies posting the same jobs. So it's really fewer companies posting jobs, uh, which, you know, look, it's looking like companies are uh, either, uh, either you know, going out, etc. Hey, so um, this is probably if, for. I'm gonna jump in quick, uh, Evan. Yeah, quick go ahead. Point to Julia, what Julia just said. Uh, I think there's a few things because what I get a lot of comments on and feedback on from job seekers and then the market is that that jobs are down or salaries are down or uh, a lot of like RTO, uh, and then I think like what we're basically seeing is like a shifting like job market in like global landscape, right? Because there's no longer, your, if you're competing for a remote job, it's not just with like your local audience in San Jose or New York or wherever you're looking for a job, it's now with everyone globally. And so that's reducing salaries and making job searches much more difficult. And we're seeing that on our end too, because prior to COVID, uh, we, we basically like from a technology perspective, most tech companies are hiring in the US um, or the re geographic area and now and our, for example, on our, our data, like over 90% of our jobs were in office prior to COVID and now uh, consistently over 50% of them have been international or global. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Well, you know, look, we all picked up on Matthew's uh, global chart that showed 12% increase in, in South America. So they're hiring yeah. from someplace and that's probably where that is. All right. So the next question is really about, you know, if, if we sort of to talk about this rolling recession, everyone sort of agreed, uh, hey, there's this rolling recession. Uh, it's happening really in each industry, each sector. Tech really got hit really badly at the beginning of the year. So, you know, if we're using recruiting and we're using jobs as a uh, as an early indicator of who's next uh, of the recession, uh, any any thoughts on on who's 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 going to stay? I think we talked about staffing. Uh, sorry, uh, tech staffing up first. But whose turn is it for layoffs? And no one say Etsy because they just that just happened about an hour ago. Um, so really, who, who's everyone thinking? Julia, you have any, any thoughts on who's next? Well, so here's the interesting thing. Job growth in uh, the last 12 months is kind of perfectly negatively correlated to uh, the decline since the pandemic. In other words, the companies that lost the most jobs early in the pandemic have added the most jobs in the last 12 months. So there's almost been a complete wow. sort of reversal. Uh, a lot of... Um, uh, sort of cyclical uh, recovery. Uh, so if we think that that process is going to continue, uh, the industries that have led the decline in job postings and ZipRecruiter data the past 12 months uh, are retail trade, uh, trade transportation and utilities, information, which is kind of, t oh, no, sorry, this is, yeah. Um, uh, sorry, this is not our zip recruiter. This is this is BLS. Sorry, in BLS, the biggest decline in job openings over the last twelve months has been in retail, trade, transportation, and utilities, information sector, um, and manufacturing. So, those are still uh, signaling you know continued contraction in the coming months. Actually, hey, just uh, for the audience, BLS stands for Bureau of Labor Statistics. The Excellent. Labor Department. That's the Labor Department. The JOLT report actually comes from the Bureau of Labor Statistics also. Um, uh, Matthew, what are you thinking about who's next? You know, what would you think about who's next in the layoff side? Um, I think um, one industry we haven't brought up uh, that I come from is consulting. Um, so I guess one area that uh, I guess we've, when as the economy has been sort of shrinking and there's been more and more uncertainty, companies are also just as unwilling as they are to to obviously spend in capital expenditure, but also in uh, external consultants and consulting projects. And so we've seen a bit of a bit of a, a stagnation in that industry, um, coupled with uh, definitely uh, at low attrition rates in consulting firms um, in that industry in particular. Um, and so one would expect the combination of those things that uh, could result in further layoffs for some firms, especially smaller firms, um, but tricky to say at the moment. Matt, I think what, what surprised me, though, is how resilient staffing has been in mm. consulting and exactly. in financial services. I mean, we've had like a dead year and a half when it comes to IPOs, right? A very, very, very quiet IPO and M&A market. And yet financial services employment has not shrunk. Uh, consultants are, you know, watching Netflix, according to that Wall Street Journal article, because uh, <laughs> tech companies are not um, are not uh, hiring consultants at the same rate that they used to, because they're in this sort of year of efficiency, cost cutting mode, uh, yeah. and yet the major consulting companies have not done layoffs. And we did have now announcements that the new class of recruits yeah. will be smaller for recruiting companies, uh, for for consulting companies, um, but. I'm, I'm, I think it's been surprising how resilient staffing has been in many industries that have been quite depressed when it look when you look at activity and revenue and that kind of thing. Certainly, certainly. Um, and uh, so I, I knew that next question was about AI, and I think there's a little correlation there. So, um, Matthew, you were talking about AI jobs, uh, and Julia, are you seeing the same thing? Are you see are you seeing jobs in AI or relate to AI? be sort of a new normal? Absolutely. So I think this is exactly what is going on, that many companies are using this slow period to reinvest and to uh, upskill and restructure um, and develop the, uh, the, sort of the skills and capabilities of the future. Uh, they know uh, that sort of 
um, staying at the cutting edge requires digitalization. It requires uh, um, uh, investments in AI. And so they are kind of maintaining overall headcount because they are poaching top talent as layoffs take place elsewhere. Uh, and and using this time to sort of focus on long term internal kind of changes, structural changes. Um, so let's break out AI in terms of jobs that require AI. Sort of Ma uh, Matthew, the one that you were talking about in the Aura report, and and Jesse. Just when you're you know are you is when you're hiring people, is part of the job description now? Hey, you got to be able to use ChatGPT and AI. Definitely not part of the job description, but I think just one of those tools that uh, I think every organization, if you're looking like from a learning and development standpoint within the people team, I think uh, should be top of mind for most most companies. I think um, to comment off of uh, a few like trends uh, or comments um, in the comment section, I think Bill Murphy said uh, suggest some of the data is like lagging. I think um, that might be true, and I think uh, like to go back to the last topic briefly to touch on, I think uh, we're seeing we're seeing reversal of like a lot of the, the tech jobs trending pretty heavily up the last quarter. It'll continue to trend up, but I think you're seeing like uh, a lot of hourly and like blue collar type work actually trending down. Um, I think like B, business to consumer type companies are struggling a bit more now, uh, which which is an interesting observation just from from a uh, hiring standpoint. The, sorry, the B two B cost the B two B companies. B two Bs are trend, jobs are trending up. B two C is trending down. B two B reversal of the last. All right, reversal of what happened. That's at least from our like from a higher uh, lens. It doesn't not from the, not speaking to revenue or stock price or anything. Else. Right. Uh, what, what was that? I heard on a podcast they called it like they they had a word like SaaS session, like the a, a recession among the SaaS companies. Yeah, no, like, that's 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 shifted pretty heavily now. We're, not, uh, AI, not, uh, well, crypto, not, SaaS, all the tech companies are hiring pretty yeah. aggressively. Um, so one thing, you know, what I was seeing in Matthew's report, um, the number of financial service companies that are hiring folks in AI, and maybe that's actually foreboding, you know, a greater layoff in the financial services sector later on in the year when they start to take advantage of it. Ma Matthew, and one of the questions were, like, what sort of roles, did you know, what sort of roles were they looking at in AI and financial services? Um, so I haven't looked at that detail. So it's a great question to uh, definitely something worth looking into. Um, I, I guess uh, thinking laterally, though, I guess uh, the areas we should be mindful of where AI can can be involved with sort of helping to automate certain processes or, or helping to slim down the workforce would be a lot of the administrative functions and so on. Um, whereas um, I guess considering the fact that AI can um, be used to help someone and complement someone in the workforce, uh, very much uh, in functions like you know, marketing, um, engineering, et cetera, uh, you're probably less likely to see layoffs or uh, some replacement in inverted commas uh, of those kinds of people. Um, but yeah, no, it's a really good point uh, worth looking into exactly where the AI demand is. So it'll be really interesting to see from Julia that average open, open jobs per company and the new ones, right? Is AI having an impact? Hey, I don't need to hire, you know, I don't need, but you're not going to see that in the quantity. I don't need to hire four customer service people. I only need to hire two. But you're, you're not going to really see that in uh, in the number of open jobs. It's just the roles they're trying to fill, right? Right. I mean, so I, I think there's there are signs that there's a lot of um, uh, investment in labor saving technology taking place at the moment. Uh, AI is not really the the biggest area of that yet. It's still fairly small. Uh, self checkout is is a bigger place where we're seeing automation and the replacement of workers at the moment. I think uh, cashier jobs are falling as a result um, of, of that shift towards self-service and self-checkout. Um, but we will certainly see it in, in the coming months and years. Um, uh, you know, one, one paper has shown that when ChatGPT was launched, uh, the employment of freelancers, jobs for freelancers online went down. So someone who might have gone on to Fiverr or Upwork or somewhere and said, hey, can you draft me a, a speech for my brother's wedding? Well, now just ask ChatGPT to do it. All right. So jobs like that, that kind of content writing um, has clearly uh, been, been sort of, you know, employment there has, has shifted. It's been disrupted. Um, 
AI content writer is the number one AI job title that we've seen. And those wow. jobs are mostly at freelance sort of platforms. So, uh, you know, the, the work has gone from being distributed to being sort of uh, housed in one in one place. Um, otherwise, the, the main AI related roles are still very technical roles, data scientist, data software engineer type uh, roles. Fascinating. I think it's going to be. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah, just to, just a point, Julia. That was a, a great uh, perspective, and I, I think like the the question that this slide poses about which industries will incorporate AI the most. If we're thinking about AI as a labor saving tool only, it's probably tempting to look at an industry like financial services is doing a lot of hiring. Matthew, you said over seventy percent increase in AI related roles at financial services. I almost view it like those are the industries where we are going to see more growth. Like you want to look at what industries will AI replace uh, certain functions and which ones are going to benefit from using AI. So I almost see financial services and consulting as benefiting from that and maybe retail hiring. And I, I kind of intimated this with the uh, with the e-commerce uh, uh, actually taking some, uh, perhaps some, some of the, the hiring growth away from like the holiday, the regular holiday uh, cycle. And so it might be taking away jobs from uh, from retail, but maybe augmenting jobs in certain uh, uh, industries like like finance. Uh, we actually call it at uh, at Aura. Uh, it's really automate versus augment, hmm. right? Is it highly augmented or low augmentation, or highly automated or low automated? So you could sort of break out a matrix of what roles can be augmented superpowers, if you will. Uh, hey, I can now draft my own emails uh, or whatever planning using chat GPT or, uh, or, uh, uh, or, uh, uh, or, uh, or automated, right? A customer service desk is now just a chat bot. That's actually doing all the frontline customer support. I, I think it's really fascinating, which brings us to our last question, uh, bottom of the hour already, uh, no matter where you are, it's the bottom of the hour. Um, what is your, let's go do a round table on, you know, the outlook, labor market development in Q1 of 24. Uh, and we should probably get more, uh, some some metrics around it. So do you see jobs going up? Um, and what, what do you think about that? So up or down? And what are you thinking about it? So Jesse, you want to kick it off? Sure. Yeah, I think um, I think the labor market will be a pretty strong in 2024 and beyond. Uh, I think specifically um, tech. Uh, I've said this many times over the years. I think that the rate at which tech is evolving and growing, especially with AI, the demand for jobs in the short term, at least the short term being multiple years, five to eight years, is going to be much, much higher than the, the rate at which new graduates or in qualified workers enter the workforce in tech. And so I think there will continually be a shortage. That's why sites like recruiter.com, ZipRecruiter, uh, and whatnot are going to continue to be really, really popular, I think, in the, the coming years, just in general. So I think the, the market will be strong. Strong market. Excellent. Miles, what do you think? Uh, so unfortunately, I do not have a glowing uh, crystal ball <laughs> in my hand. Uh, I, again, I would I would probably reiterate what Jesse said about, about strong tech hiring in Q1. Um, I think the, the latest is that they're going to start cutting in um, June. They're going to start cutting the, the rate in uh, in June. And so I, I would I would anticipate tech being strong. We saw tech being strong um, in the November recruiter index. So it kind of uh, jives with that. So I'd say uh, I'd say definitely tech, uh, and then you know see where it, it's uh, tech is pulling away from different industries. So again, I would say you know retail. I don't see any uh, really positive uh, trends there, and a lot of it is shifting into tech. I think a big trend we're going to see is a lot of uh, upskilling. Uh, uh, companies like Amazon, like large companies, Amazon did their. Um, I think it's called Amazon Twenty Twenty Five. Uh, basically, a, 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 a upskilling program to upskill their almost entire workforce or large swaths of their workforce on new technical skills. So I think you're going to see a lot of this uh, transformation in the workplace where uh, lar the large employers know that there's a big shift. Instead of going out and necessarily trying to find uh, the new talent, they're going to also upskill their, their current workforce. So I think we're going to see a, a lot of uh, shifts in the types of roles that they're looking at towards uh, the tech side. Miles, that's a great point. I'm gonna piggyback off what you said and add, uh, that's one of the things we're seeing. In fact, in December alone, we've seen requests for a couple thousand jobs uh, for us to hire against that are all working with AI and technology just to do prompt engineering or basic like 
administrative work, working with AI, not being augmented by AI, at least in the short term. And so that's a, a really, really good point. So if people, if you're looking to get work with AI in any capacity uh, or upskill yourself, I think that's uh, independently of your, your employer, that's a very, very good idea because it's going to be a lot of recruiters looking for people that are familiar and acquainted with the latest AI technology. All right, Julia, up to you. I see job growth continuing to slow uh, in the first quarter. And then I think you know, once rates, you know, not necessarily the Fed cutting rates, but even if the market uh, market rates come down ahead of the Fed cuts, uh, you'll start to see things easing up. And, and once the Fed does start cutting, I think you're going to see a surge of demand for workers across multiple industries that have been uh, just very slow, treading water. I mean, over the last six months, it's only the government, leisure and hospitality, uh, and the healthcare sector that have added jobs at all. They've added 98% of all jobs in the last six months. Other industries are really taking a wait and see approach and just sort of uh, you know, holding steady. So um, they've made huge investments. The conditions are now right. You know, Many companies that were holding back because of supply chain disruptions or shortages of microchips or whatever it was, uh, no longer face those problems. The shortages have been alleviated. They're in an excellent position to go forth and hire and grow. Uh, and I look forward to that happening starting around the middle of the year. Excellent. Matthew? Not a huge amount to add. Definitely agree with what's been said before. Um, the only thing I would add here is... Um, so in the UK, tomorrow is the day when um, central bank uh, decides on uh, interest rates here. So um, likely, likely they won't rise. They'll be kept stable. Um, and should we see drops, uh, as Julie alluded to, um, next year eventually, um, then uh, I guess we'll probably have a very quick impact on, on the job market as uh, that pent up demand for, for talent uh, is, can be realized. I'm sure the similar, similar applies for the US. All right, Evan's prediction. So my prediction is um, that as interest rates, so right now we still have a very stagnant quit rate, right? It's so the same number of people have been quitting. It's been pretty consistent. I think that that number will increase. Uh, so candidate sentiment is up because candidates know they can go get another job. Uh, the the wages have been pretty consistent, so they haven't been increasing the way they were in twenty in twenty two. However, once interest rates go down. And so the demand goes up for workers. You'll see more workers. That quit rate will go up. Uh, therefore, you'll start seeing more backfill requirements, et cetera. So I think it'll be a frothier recruiting market um, across the board there because I'm going to be having a harder time holding on to people. Candidates have now learned that they could leave jobs and find a new job whenever they want. Uh, so the day of, of keeping someone for 20 years, uh, the way our grandparents or parents uh, that's over. And I think that uh, it won't take much to get candidates to leave their jobs. And I think right now we're in that sort of middle market. Candidates were quitting even though there's a recession. Candidates were quitting even though there are wars in, uh, overseas. Candidates are quitting even though salaries aren't really increasing by that much. Uh, and I think once those elements change, once wages actually start to increase as interest rates go down, uh, we'll start seeing quit rates go up and be a much more interesting second half of the year or whenever those happen. I, I, there are a few people talking about Q1 rate cuts. So I think that'll be very, very interesting to see what happens. Um, we, I think we covered a lot. Um, we actually covered uh, a lot of the questions that came in there. I'll ask one question to Julia that just, just came up there from a few different people. Um, are you seeing any different between remote, hybrid, in-person? Have you, have you been tracking that? Like, where's that settling out these days? Absolutely. So uh, there has been a bit of a pullback, but not that much. Uh, so about 3% of job postings were remote before the pandemic. That's around 11% now, uh, down from around 13% uh, in 2021. Um, in our surveys of employers, uh, there's just massive variation across organizations. So no one's kind of converging on one way of doing things. You have about 16% of companies that are letting all their office jobs be done fully remotely. There are 18% who are allowing workers to choose whether to be in the office um, or, or work from home sort of totally at their discretion. Uh, you know, about 8% requiring one day in the office a week, about, you know, 12% 
two days in the office, 13%, three days in the office, you know, 9%, four days in the office. I mean, it's, it's just, everyone's all over the place. There's no one way to do things. Um, and companies are still figuring this out. So about 40% of companies said that they had uh, pulled back on remote work opportunities to some degree over the past year, but 34% said that they had expanded remote work opportunities over the past year. So uh, I think we're at a sort of steady in a steady state right now where overall in the aggregate remote work opportunities are uh, staying very stable and many surveys bear that out the number of work days being worked remotely is staying pretty stable office occupancy rates are holding steady uh, in the long term I think we'll see a continued gradual increase as more companies invest in the right technology and management sort of structures. Fantastic. Well, look, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, we uh, Matthew published a really cool report this morning, a really cool article on where did Amazon uh, Amazon tech people go? So what retailers or e-tailers did the Amazon tech people go to? And it actually jives, Julia, with what you and, and Miles, what you were saying. They did not go to the old school retailers who picked up the good talent. They went to other e-commerce companies. I uh, invite everyone to go check it out and follow Aura. Uh, you can go, go visit Aura at getaura.ai or on LinkedIn, uh, check out Aura. Um, Jesse, you want to just give your uh, your information, coordinates, et cetera? Yeah, you can follow me on uh, Twitter, at Jesse Tinsley. Uh, follow me on uh, LinkedIn or uh, check us out, jobops.com. Excellent. Thanks, right. Thank, you Thank you so much. Miles? Yep. Uh, so I'm uh, at MilesWorks at uh, Twitter. Uh, you can follow uh, recruiter.com spelled out or just go to recruiter.com, uh, the website. Excellent, and Julia? Uh, come to ziprecruiter.com and our research website for the economic research team is ziprecruiterresearch.org. Uh, um, I got a new site to go to, thanks Julia. <laughs> uh, awesome, and Matthew? Yeah, um, you can follow me on LinkedIn, um, but definitely check out uh, getaura.ai, which is our company website for Aura, um, to check out our workforce analytics platform. Excellent. Everyone, really, thank you so much for uh, for coming today. Jesse, did you want to add anything now? All good. All good. All right. Excellent. Any closing remarks, anyone? Uh, it's a it's a very interesting job market. I uh, We all, the, the five of us all believe that where the market goes, it all depends about people. Uh, so when companies talk about their greatest assets are their people, tracking where people are going, looking at workforce analytics, understanding where the jobs are coming and going and how they're moving uh, is really going to help everyone sort of navigate the overall world of employment, looking at companies from a performance perspective or where you're going to go get your next job. So for everyone, uh, have a, my name is Evan Sohn. I'm available at uh, 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 in a number of places. You can follow me on LinkedIn, Evan Sohn. Uh, my email address is evan.sohn at bain.com. Uh, feel free to uh, reach out to me for more information. And again, thank you everyone for uh, for joining us today and we'll see you next month. See you then. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you.